in your mouth is as powerful as the word of God in his mouth if it's spoken by the Spirit of God. You say, whoa, hold on here, Pastor Ralph. You mean God's word in my mouth is as powerful as God's word in his mouth. Yes, that's what I'm saying. If it is spoken by the Spirit of God. If it's spoken out of your own revelation or your own thinking or your own passion or desire, it will not work the words of God. But if the Word of God dwells in you richly and the Spirit of God anoints you powerfully, what you speak with your mouth will bring about the same results as God Himself speaks. Because this will bring change in our lives. We're floundering today. And I've said, oh Lord, let me be so divinely connected that when I speak, I will speak as an oracle of God. There have been times and services. I was just in Romania not long ago, just this past spring into the month of June. What a powerful time. All of a sudden, I'm standing there and I felt this mighty anointing of the Spirit of God come upon me. And all of a sudden, I began to speak things that I had not prepared. I was hearing with these ears what was coming out of my mouth, which was not my words. They were formed by the Spirit of God. And all of a sudden, that whole church came alive under the anointing of God. Worship exploded. All of a sudden, two godly women came at the end of the service, had visions. Actually, they saw an angel standing, a large angel waving a banner and declaring this is a new day for the church. Yeah. It, was, it was so powerful. Another lady saw a mighty fountain of God gushing up in a pool that was dirty and, and filled with debris. And all of a sudden it sprang forth and it cleansed the whole pool. And it was able to be water to drink from. God was changing that church supernaturally. We need changes in our churches. We need changes in our lives. Things can get in there and muddy the water. Debris can be allowed in our lives. What we need is a mighty fountain of God to be released in us, to cleanse us, and to flow with springs of living water. God is desirous to do great things within our midst. What will be a blockage to the operation of a spoken word? Let's look at verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what thing soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you might possibly get them. Is that what it says? What does it say? Help me out. Ye shall have them. Now that's so clear, that's so powerful. If, if this wasn't Jesus saying it, I'd be wondering. Jesus said it. It's all in red letters in my Bible. I got a red letter edition. And it says, whatsoever when you ask when you pray, believe and ye shall have them. I said, Lord, change my whole prayer life. That I'm not throwing out a prayer and saying, oh, I wish, Lord. It's like throwing coins in a fountain or, or trying to draw a straw, hoping that something will happen. No, this is articulation of divine expression. This is word being spoken by the Spirit of God from your heart of faith. Have faith in God. When you speak it, it shall come to pass. Oh, well, I remember when I was a young pastor, the Spirit of God exploded in the church in, uh, in Peterborough where I was pastoring. The, the building was so filled with students from the Bible College, many of them had never seen a miracle. And while I was yet preaching, all of a sudden there was an explosion of the power of God. I just finished a week of fasting and prayer. I was so connected with God that even if you said Jesus, I just weep. There was such a sensitivity to God. And there was such a release of the anointing of God at a moment that when I began to preach, I couldn't preach anymore. It was like a thunder bolt hit the place. The people burst into praise and crying out to God. And I said, Jesus is in the house. Anything you want, ask him now. I had that kind of faith. They were bringing the lady from the back to the left, bringing her up here to the front. She's being helped because she had double Parkinson's. Her whole body, she was uh, palsy. And she was trembling greatly. And they brought her to the front. 
And I said, I want her to be brought to the platform. I want everybody to see a miracle. I got her to the platform, the old devil was in my ear, so what happens if it doesn't work? Can you imagine? I'm in this great flow and this flash hits my into my brain. I knew where it came from. But I was already out there too far to come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, bring her up here, and she stood there. And when I reached my hand, my right hand, to put it upon her head, to release the power of God, I felt like fire going down this arm and shot out like the tips of the finger. Went into her body. And she stood there still trembling. And uh, said, it's not happening. I said, it's done. I knew it was done as sure as I'm standing here. I said, let's worship God and praise the Lord. We were just praising God for the miracle, and yet she was still standing there. All of a sudden, we heard a yell. This little quiet lady shouted out, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. And I said, stretch forth your hands. She stretched forth her hands. They were as calm and still as could be. God instantly healed yes, before the eyes of the people. God. All because somebody dared to speak the word of God. Now, when you speak the word of God, sometimes you're going to have to get out of the boat. You can't walk on water in the boat. So if you want to walk on water, get out of the boat and watch what God will do. Sometimes, you know, we all say that, Peter, what weak faith he had. I don't look upon Peter's weak faith, but he's he got out of, the boat, out of the boat, walked on water. The other boys sat in the boat. Give him credit for the distance he made. Wasn't all that far, but he at least walked on water. And there are times in our life that you're going to be challenged by the word of God. But you have to be willing to be challenged and to dare to do it. We used to say when we were kids, dare you. If you didn't do it, double dare you. I'd like to double dare some of you today. To get you to believe the word of God and to step out of the boat into the water and see what God can do. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Hallelujah. All oh, things are possible. Interesting that Jesus never concluded this great teaching without adding this. And this is where the problem lies in the church today. Why we're not seeing the supernatural works of God in our lives, our family, our churches, is because of this look at verse 25. And when you stand praying, now he's talking about whatsoever things you shall ask in prayer. If you believe it shall happen. Then he goes on in verse 25. When you stand praying, Give me the word. Forgive. Forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Right. Now, why did Jesus have to put that in there? I was feeling so good. Got those verses 22, 23, 24. Oh, I'm going to talk to moms. Good and mighty things are going to happen. Then he slipped this verse in. Yes. I've got to forgive. I don't want to forgive. People are mean. People are miserable. They did it to me first, Lord. They're downright mean. And you want me to forgive the Lord? says, okay, it's up to you. If you don't want to forgive them, that's your choice, but I can't forgive you either. Oh, oh hold it, hold it, Lord, then let's have another talk here. How many know we can put the brakes on real fast? We're so quick, wanting to get answers, wanting to move mountains, wanting to see miracles of God, and then we're not willing to delight the heart of the Father. Everything about the Father is love. The great compassionate heart of God is to forgive. Willing to forgive our trespasses. Isn't that what he taught us? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. You don't have to go very far to find somebody who's not patting you on the back. we would like to punch you in the nose. He said, oh, well, that's not around here. I just had to learn to, boy, I'm not a boxer, but boy, I have to know how to protect there are people out there that will cut you down, slice you up, throw you out. But it's those who know how to walk in love that know the heart of the Father. Amen. 
And if we can discover this, then there are no barriers or obstacles to getting answers to prayer and the mountains to be removed on your life. It's a lesson. It's not easy. Believe me, saints. I've been in this ministry now over 50 years. I can see the little thank you for that. Like somebody said, it can't be. You're only 50 years of age. <laughs> I, I read that look on your face. I really appreciate that. But uh, somebody said, you've got to be at least 70 if you're a great grandfather. I said, well, it's miracle babies. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how life goes on? But there are lessons we've got to learn. Why is it that we're so difficult in learning these lessons? Walking in love. Learning how to forgive one another. You know, I, I thought I had discovered this. I said, Lord, I feel your love. Then if anybody ever jabs me, it lose with love. <laughs> Lord, I said, okay, we'll give you a test. Somebody was mean and nasty. I don't know where they are, but I seem to find them. And somebody jabbed me. And I was shocked. It wasn't love that oozed out of the wound. It was, you're, you'll be sorry, buddy. <laughs> but the Lord says, oh, I thought you were so full of love that if anybody stabbed or jabbed you, you'll ooze with love. I said, well, that was that part of the Lord. <laughs> He hit the wrong part. If he got the right part, it would have been love. How many know if you're full of love, every place you be jabbed or stabbed, it will flow in love. We're not little bits and pieces of hate here, love here. Wherever somebody happens to hit the wrong spot, they get hate. Another spot, they get love. We are to be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Filled with love that regardless of what happens, you respond in love. Now that's not easy. I'm not even here saying that's an easy thing. It's something that you have to walk this out day by day. But it's so important that if you're not filled with the love of God, it cuts you off from flowing in the mighty works of the Lord. It's not worth it. I'd rather go down with all the attacks of the enemy, but rise up to say, oh Lord, I can love. Love those who despitefully use you. Love those even that have odd against you. Many times I've discovered that they don't mean to be mean. They're just mean. <laughs> That's them. They, they just live out what they are. How many know that? And when you tell them, that was a mean thing. What do you mean? They don't even recognize it. They, they're just, it's all part of the life. How they need the revelation of the sweetness of his nature. Yes. And be transformed by the supernatural working of God in the mind. We need mind transformation. If we're going to see lives transformed in the purpose of the Lord.